there's a place near to me where I'm longing to be with my friends at the old country church. There with mother we went and our Sundays were spent with my friends at the old country church. Precious years.
17th, April 17th, Easter, no evening service, sunrise service at 7. Breakfast will be served between the sunrise service and Sunday school. Normal Sunday. Worship will follow the Sunday school. Men will be cooking breakfast. Yeah. They want me to cook, y'all. They want me to sing, y'all want me to cook. Probably not. It's about like my saying. Yeah. But somebody do it and do a good job, I know. April 17th, children uh, on that Easter Sunday morning, children will be singing and playing bells during our morning service. April 8th, be Mother's Day, no evening service, no evening service on Easter either. 
May the fifth be our graduation during the morning service for our seniors that's listed. Vacation Bible School will be June the fifth through the ninth. <clears throat> On the third the service commencement, we'll have a special program for all ages to be held at 7 p.m. Do we still need candy or we got enough candy? Okay. Got enough Easter candy individually wrapped. Don't need that. Uh, we need Charlie Mallard home doing better. Letha Tucker had her 95th birthday, April 10th, Harborview. Jessup, Georgia. Turn our attention to your prayer lesson. I think we really need to. Riyad Elnita Davison. Marissa K. Williams is the infant granddaughter of Amanda White. Bree. David Lamar Chester. Bree. Add Allie Cruz to the, to the prayer list. Special prayer. Martha Lee. Ruby Thomas. Here tonight, thank the Lord. She's on better, but she got up, upper, had an upper respiratory infection. Team remember her, Gwen Stricken. Some of you saw me blowing out there, trying to blow the rocks and sand off of the thing. Gwen Stricken was life lighted from out here this morning, I think about 3 o'clock, to St. Vincent. And she's in a cardiac. Definitely needs our prayers. Uh, two of you leave back in the Brunswick Hospital, fluid on her lung. Hazel Pratter is here, thank the Lord, but she's going to have some shots in her back, so be in prayer for her. David Jacob, not feeling well, said he thought he had a bug. Fires. Cecil Schrider passed out, fell on the table, then the floor, bruised himself. They had left his pacemaker unplugged by mistake. Doctors, he's back home. Continue to play for Joni Rollison. Got two tests, you know what? Two tubes. She got two tubes in her. I talked with her a couple nights ago, and she lost a lot of weight. And she looked frail, but she got to have some more tests done, I think, shortly, too. But remember, be, be in prayer for her. She needs a lot of prayer. Okay. She's a. Uh, She's weak, but she, she was out when I saw her. But, uh, continue to pray for Dale to give some <clears throat> Massey. She got to see a little daylight today, I think. First time she's been out in a long time. Just for a little little while. Had Pat, Pat here in her prayer list. Jack Smith got tested. Coming up. <clears throat> Trusted John not doing well. Lily Cruz and Mayo surgery Tuesday. Randall Lee's grandbaby, little year, over a year old, with leaking fluid behind his ear. Remember, baby, Eve hands out of the hospital, still got blood clot. So remember all these. Anybody else we need to add to take off? Your brother, Paul. Okay. Mm -hmm. What put three or four drops in your eye uh, every day? Four times a day. Try to cl help clear it up. So Robert's still having some problems with his eyes, so I didn't remember that. Left him. Left him. And Paul and Ramona Willis were the ones you wanted to ask.
Got, got them room reserved, but they hadn't got it yet. They go into like across the sister living deal, right? I had a lake, he's in a nursing home, but I. I thought we missed Blanche. Monday, I think it was. He's having rehab at Baden. Who is? See them? You hear that, Mike? Yeah, I heard you say that. Yeah. Charlotte and Lily get together, or is that something like that? I don't know about Charlotte, but Lily, we just got her. She's on a, going to have surgery Tuesday. In May of Lily. Uh, Charlotte, I don't, I'm not sure. I know. A week or so ago, all four of them. The Reagan family was asked to be added to the prayer list. Anybody else? Unspoken? But Terry, how about Lena and this? No music tonight, so we'll just go ahead and get right into the Word. Go into your Bible and find Luke's Gospel, chapter 23. Luke's Gospel, chapter 23. Sunday will be uh, celebrating Easter, the resurrection. And we've walked step by step tonight. We're going to talk about the crucifixion um, and the part that Luke writes in, in the Gospel here about the things that Jesus did on his way to... Um, Calvary um, listening a lot there's a lot of people reminding a lot of things uh, especially on gospel channels and different ones uh, old, older preachers some that's done going on all but talking about uh, what we call in Mount Calvary or Golgotha it used to be Mount Moriah in the Old Testament and uh, kind of interesting that I don't know why a lot of us bringing that up now uh, but there's a lot of talk about it. Uh, but anyway, I guess the Lord's coming back soon. He's going to come back to that very same place. So uh, somewhere right there around Jerusalem. But anyway, if you found your, uh, open your Bible there to 23. Let's stand. I'm going to read from 26, 27. As Luke jumps in right after um, they released Barabbas. Uh, going to uh, crucify Jesus Christ. And it says this, And <clears throat> as they led him away, they laid hold on one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country. And, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great uh, company of people, of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. These crying, uh, wailing people, you know, sometimes when a death would come in those towns, they would actually hire people to come in to, to uh, weep and, and uh, mourn the loss of one. But here we see these women coming behind Christ, and it says that they were crying. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, uh, the Lord, tonight for all your blessings. And, God, we thank you that we have your precious word. Lord, it gives us details about what you did for us physically and spiritually spiritually most of all, and that how did you would take on the flesh and suffer from, for mankind, the, the, the sins of this world. God, we thank you for it. Be with us now. Let us understand your word. Let us follow it closely, Father, as only you have written it. Be with us now. And all God's people said, Amen. We look at the word of God, and uh, we, we find that Jesus toted the cross for a while, and uh, as some 
uh, would refer to there where Jesus fell beneath the load. I mean, he was had already been beaten to the point that most men would have been dead by now, but we know he was not just another man. Uh, and anyway, he fell beneath the load, and they compelled one uh, Simon, a Cyrenian, to come and carry the cross. You know, Luke says, after Christ, a- after him, Christ would lead the way. He would carry the cross behind him as he would walk uh, to Golgotha, where uh, outside of the gate where they would crucify him. Uh, just as God would have it, he took advantage of all situations. You see in your mind and, and visualize these women weeping and wailing and, and carrying on and uh, behind him crying. Uh, it brings it, it, it to Jesus' attention, and he makes a comment here from uh, 28 to 31. Uh, listen to what it says here. As Jesus was in a lot calmer state of mind than you would imagine a man gone through the things that he had went through because he was able to say these things. It says in verse 28, it says, But Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wounds that never, never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? Strange word he ended up with there. We'll talk about it in a minute. But could you imagine how that these people receive what Jesus said? Don't he, you know They were there weeping because they loved him. He was the Messiah. He, he was Christ. He was the great healer. He was the master. He was all these things and, and uh, uh, didn't even look like himself, but he was himself. But yet he turned around to them. He says, don't weep for me. You might better re- be weeping for yourself because after this is over, worse things will come. And you know what? It has ever since that day. But still the way that he made for us to get out of here uh, is through his salvation plan. And that was to die on the cross, to rise from the dead, that we all could believe in him uh, by faith and be saved. And, and that's what it was. But it said these, to these women, it even uh, flirts with a little bit of what we hear will happen in the tribulation period. Uh, there it, it's going to be that bad even in tribulation period for uh, people will not want to take the, the mark of the beast. Uh, uh, if they don't do that, they couldn't get food, they couldn't get milk for their babies. I, I think about that. Uh, my wife pointed it out to me the other day because uh, I was caught off with her and we had to go in some shopping areas and and uh, whew, that was bad. But anyway, uh, she went by there and the baby milk aisle, she says, I want you to look there. It's it, it, it's true, it's true. And the, where all the baby formula was at, there was just hardly none. And we see that in today's time and why that is, you know. Well, uh, it's the inability, they say, to get it trucked here, the inability of workers to to stay up with it and all like that. And it was just all the scene to happen at one time and I asked her I said now if you'd had a child and it like this what would you do what what extent would you do to go to find milk for your baby because I don't know about y'all some babies just can't drink any kind of milk you know if they didn't breast milk then it would be something and we would be working hard and I'll tell you it, it could be that you know, uh, and, and that's the kind of thought that Christ was having at the end of times. And it's going to get bad that women, it, it'll be sad for them because they'll do something to save that child. And it says, you know, they'll say, blessed is the ones that's buried and couldn't have any children. Blessed are them that's never give suck. Bless these women because they didn't have that to worry about. All they'd have to worry about is themselves. It's going to be a tough time when Satan's people and the Antichrist levers your kids kids against you to do these things because uh, you know how we love our own children and uh, it, it, he just kind of thinks of that he said there'll come a day for that to happen but 31 says this again I want to read it. it says for if they do these things in a green tree what shall be done in the dry um, uh, just think of Christ being the green tree he's God he's the he's a, a, the, the second part of the Godhead he comes down he takes on the form of man and uh, he is flesh and blood and this happens to him in in in, in human in, in the real human life. 
And you think about that. He says, if they'll do this kind of thing while I'm here, what do you think they're going to do when I'm gone? You know, it was one thing to see Jesus walk these streets and heal people, feed the thousands with just a, a small amount of it, pay the taxes out of a, a fish's mouth, uh, do all the miracles and all the things that he done, leading people to salvation and uh, to have this to happen to him and yet so many disbelieved in him he says if they'll do it even while I'm here what do you think it's going to be like when he's not well I'll tell you there is a great falling away of believers not just from the church but new converts uh, in the world today basically because they think and 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 the way the world acts, they don't look for a Christ. They, they pretty much believe that what we have here is all there to it. They don't fear God of no way, form, or fashion. And uh, your governments is starting to get formed uh, to a point where they're going to leave God out as much as they possibly can. And that is a dry season. That is a time. Dry representing the dead. Green representing the life. That it's, it's, it's a lifeless type situation. But we still have Christ. We don't need to lose hope. We don't need to get beat down because eternally we're okay. It might be tough uh, physically, but eternally we're going to be fine. We'll never die according to the word of God. We'll never die. And after he said these things, it says, And there were also two other male factors led with him uh, to be put to death. You know, we don't really remember them. These guys hadn't been beaten like Christ did, and they were carrying their cross as well. And it says, And when they were, were come out to the place which is called uh, Calvary, he says, uh, There they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and one on the left hand. So that's where we get our three crosses from, of course, as we know that, and uh, Christ being put in the middle. Uh, you know, how, how ironic that would be. Why would they put him in the middle? I believe his was a little bit higher on that mountain than everybody else's. Uh, you know, I think that was one of their, their greatest accomplishments they may have thought they ever did, that they would put him up there. To, but, but the Bible said that in, in the prediction that what would happen to him, that he would be high and lifted up. Uh, and uh, we see that he was high lifted up there on the cross. He's high lifted up as we talk and brag about him. We lift him up. Uh, he was already lifted up one day and set on that uh, rugged cross there for our sins. But these two guys were right there beside him. Uh, but even on the cross, after the nails were drove in his hand uh, and his feet, the crown of thorn was on his head. It says in verse 34 that Jesus says, he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Now, this was not a silent prayer. This was not a silent prayer. Some might want to think that it was something that he uttered under his breath, but he did not because uh, the two thieves on the cross heard it and other people around him heard it as well. Uh, we know that one of the soldiers there, after it was all said and done, his response to what he saw, he says, truly this man was the Son of God. So uh, it, he, he wasn't uh, hiding uh, these things. And he prayed to the Father to forgive them. And he wasn't talking about the two thieves. He was talking about the ones that had done these things to him. Father, forgive them. Uh, you know he had to be a loving man and a loving God to be able to say those things at that moment, if I were if I were to been him, I'd have called them angels about the first time they hit me with that whip, and uh, we'd have done business right there. But he for he he foregoed that, and he went on to take the beating, and now he's nailed to the cross. And uh, after he said these things, and it says, and they parted his garments and cast lots. Well, that was prophesied that that would happen. You know, the robe that he had on, that's what they ripped off from him uh, that uh, Pilate and them had given him. Uh, not only that, he's getting a name tag put up on the cross there. We'll see that in a minute. Uh, but they parted his garment there because Jesus, when he went to them, they stripped him of what he really had, beaten him, and then put this new one on. When they ripped that off of him, uh, it... Um, it had to be a more, even more painful thing, and they cast lots for it. Like that would to be something. It was like they bidded on who would get it. You see that kind of thing today. Some 
uh, some famous person in the past could have uh, an, an old guitar, or all this and that, and they'll put it up for bid, and people will just cast lots to try to do that. Well, they thought this was a trophy, my friend. It wasn't a trophy for us. I'll tell you what, it was a, it was a, a signification of what love means is why I look at it. I look at what the Lord did for me. It's something I can never repay him for, but yet they thought it was a trophy that they could carry back home, put it put it in their in their living room when people come by and say, yeah, that Jesus man, we killed him, and here's what he was wearing, uh, and this is what we have. And in verse 35 it says, And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also uh, with them derided him, saying, He said, he saved others. Uh, let him save himself if he be Christ, the chosen of God. I'll tell you, he could have. He could have. He, he, could, he could have definitely could have. You remember when he went and fasted for 40 days and Satan came and carried him to a very high pinnacle. And uh, he, he tempted him of all things and, and told him all this stuff, you know, at the point that most men would have been weak and have been willing to give in to get all the things of this world. The devil uh, had under his control at that time. But Jesus withstood him at that very moment. We see here that the soldiers began to mock him and said, uh, if you are who you say you are, then uh, get yourself down from there. Uh, but that ain't the reason why. They, they missed it altogether. He was to go and die and give his life and he had to die and give his life that the salvation plan would be complete. Uh, I was hearing a, a preacher talk about uh, some things that, uh, and I forget what he called the, the, the priest of, of the old days, and, and some people still try to uh, worship in that kind of way. But my friend, uh, the knife that shears the lambs and the goat don't need to be used no more. We have the only true lamb of God. He was the last sacrifice, the only one that could ever take away the sins of the world. He was the spotless Lamb of God. We look at, uh, uh, maybe uh, in, in our minds, uh, look back at a time when uh, uh, Abraham had his only son and his only son Isaac, and he was uh, asked of him to carry him and sacrifice him on the mountain. You know, I, I wonder uh, why God chose to get to make Abraham prove his love for him at that point that he would lay Isaac down and bind him and put him upon the altar where he already had the fire and the wood at hand there and he's going to draw back his knife. You know, uh, if he'd have slayed Isaac, do you know that wouldn't have been the right sacrifice for us as we know it because the Bible tells us clearly that we are all born into iniquity. The blood of Isaac would not have covered our sins, would not have washed our sins away but uh, we see that he chose his only son to come and do that and at that time it was Abraham's only son now you got to know that for uh, God to take Abraham and call him the father of all he really loved Abraham but Abraham and his genealogy and all the ones after or before him their bloodline was not good enough and not pure enough only the one that come from heaven as we find the lineage of Christ, how it goes back from that, but it's only on his mother's side. The blood that ran down the cross of Calvary was uh, not stained, not ever uh, tainted with any kind of sin uh, in Jesus' life, and it was the purest uh, blood that would ever be spilt for a sacrifice. And um, uh, we, we look at them, you know, and uh, when they would sacrifice lambs and goats and stuff like that, they would get, uh, the Bible calls some of them the firstlings, or they would, the new crop, the best of the new crop, and, you know, the young ones that were, um, you know, fully developed, but yet, you know, still young, tender, and healthy, and, and beautiful, and all like that. Well, according to man's age, even as men see it today, a man don't meet, reach his physical peakness till he gets about into his 30s uh, some go a little longer some a little less uh, but to get into 30 Jesus was at the ultimate age group uh, to fit in to uh, symbolize the same thing in those days as they would do these young lambs and goats and all that he I mean everything followed to a T at 30 I mean I remember 33 y'all remember 33 I remember the 30s. I could still hop over a fence if I had a good post to swing over on there, but it won't happen today. 
Uh, it will used to happen back then. Uh, but yes, I understand. Uh, but yet he was in his prime, if you will. You know, most uh, professional ball players, after reaching about 32, 33, some of them go by the wayside uh, because uh, the body starts going the opposite direction. But Christ was in his prime, and yet he had never sinned in his life. So he was the ultimate sacrifice. And he says, and 38 it says, and a subscription also uh, written, uh, written him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the kingdom of the Jews. Notice it was written in all the languages so that all those different people that were represented there would be able to see what Pilate's message was because this is what he asked Christ and he, Jesus told him, he says, you said it. I am, I, that's who I am. He says he is uh, the uh, uh, the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which hang railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. You know, I kind of look back uh, for the last couple of years over COVID, and COVID it, it took a lot of people from us uh, and, and the things thereof. And uh, the, some of the questions that you might not actually hear it in words, but insinuated in the people that remained after these folks had died. And maybe some people died at an early age and some didn't, whether it was COVID or other reasons. But you can hear the question in their voice and they're, and they're wanting to know why God and why these things to happen and uh, what, what, what did this mean? Well, uh, it's kind of the same feeling that the, the bad, I guess, the, the, the bad thief on the cross, the one that didn't get saved, the bad thief on the cross had the same mentality, I think, as some of us do. God, why does things happen for us when we try to do things? Why did it? And then you take the worldly people. If there is a God, why is there COVID going everywhere? Uh, well, I, and why is it taking lives? And why is it taking this one? And why is it taking that one? My friend, why did Jesus have to die on the cross? This guy here's bringing it out. He says, "You ain't Christ." There's, you know, this man ought to be able at this point, knowing he was fixing to die within the hours. You know, it was close. You know, uh, you know, somewhere between twelve o'clock and 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 three o'clock. Uh, when Christ is, is fixing to give up the ghost there, um, the boys there was going to have their legs broke so they'd be dead by dark So because they had to start uh, celebrating the, the great day, you know, that they had and uh, coming up. They couldn't do all that, so they had to get them off the cross that night. So we see this uh, very thing, and he rails at Christ. Uh, man, I, I, if I could hear a kind word from a man that was beaten unmerciful like him, saying, Father, forgive them, I'd have been saying, hey, if you are who you say you are, Remember me. Remember me. But when we talk about the next thief, he don't say that. Listen to what happens. He said, he railed on him. He says, if you be Christ, he says, save thyself and us. He says, but the other answering rebuked him, saying, he says, does not thy, thou fear God. You know, if you want to know what's wrong with the world today is that very thing right there. They don't fear God whatsoever. People do things and say things and, and live a lifestyle that I would, I would be so scared. If God didn't chastise me for it, he would chastise someone that was very close to me and cause me to hurt from the inside out. Some people would be caused to hurt from the outside in, and that would happen to a loved one of yours, whether it's a grandchild, child, or wife, or husband, or whoever. That'll make you hurt from the inside out. And, uh, but, and God knows how to do those things. But this man, he says, uh, do you not fear the Lord? Do you not fear God? He says, seeing that thou art in the same condemnation. He says, man, don't you realize he's going to die and you're going to die? Why are you lashing out at that? If anything, you need to be asking for forgiveness for all the things you've done to somebody, and this may be him. This may be the one. You've heard about him. You know who he is. Listen, you could call out to him. But in verse 41, it says, he, he justly says this. He says, and we indeed justly. He says, for we receive due reward of our deeds, but this man have done nothing amiss. I think the thief on the cross that got forgiveness here, I think he knew more than uh, the average Joe. It took death to fear him into be, uh, uh, becoming a believer. You, you know, God sometimes uh, allows them kind of things to happen. He'll allow sickness, death, and, and accidents and different things to come about to get somebody's attention to let them see that they need Jesus Christ. It's a shame it has to be that way. I'll tell you what got me to say. I started believing that there was a literal hell and I didn't want to go there. 
That's what happened to me. I didn't want to burn in the devil's hell. We need to teach that in Sunday school from the little ones all the way up to the big ones that there is a, if heaven is a literal place, then so is hell and you don't want to go there. You have to make a decision not to go there in order to go to heaven. You've got to make that decision. God's got to come into your heart, and that needs to be taught. I believe this guy, he realized that, and he wanted to do something different. He says, we, 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 we deserve dying like this, but he hadn't done anything. You know, that's two time, three people that we know in this part of the crucifixion and the beating and all that. There's three people that's openly said that Christ was guiltless, uh, and he was not guilty of anything. Herod... Uh, 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 Pilate and now the thief on the cross. They outly said he had never done anything. He had never done anything worthy of this. He said, we have, but he hadn't. And notice what he did. He turned to him and he said it to him, Jesus, I believe he called him by name. I, the Bible says he called him by name, Jesus. I, so he knew who he was. He said, Jesus. He said, Lord, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. He knew he was a king because he said he was going to a kingdom. He called him by name. Listen, when I got saved, I called on the name of Jesus. That's the name the Bible says it's above every name. That's the name in which we must be saved by. It's the name of Jesus Christ. And he was at the end of his rope. He was minutes away from suffering the death on the cross himself. And he says, Lord, just remember me when you come in thy kingdom. Remember me. Uh, you know, I believe you could read back and all that thing. I believe that was part of his forgiveness. Admitting that he was wrong because he said that earlier. Me and you have done these things. We justly need to get this for us. But he ain't done anything. And he, he turned to him and he said, Would you remember me when you come into your kingdom? So he admits that he is a king. He is the Lord Jesus Christ and he is the king. Notice the response that Jesus said. He didn't say he's going to carry him to heaven. He says this, and Jesus said unto him, he says, Verily I say unto thee, today thou shalt be with me, where? In paradise. Where was paradise? Paradise and hell were in the heart of the earth. That's where we found the rich men and Lazarus. There's a great gulf fixed between them. You know, we know that in the three days that Jesus was in the tomb, that the Bible refers to it, that he went to the heart of the earth. He done business down there when he got down there. But he did business with the devil because he took there the keys of death, hell, and the grave. The Bible says he bruised his heel on Satan's head, uh, giving him a little, uh, as uh, Kim Emerson would say, uh, some kind of Judy chop. He, anyway, he come back victorious over that. He holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave. So there he says, Today thou shalt be when we in paradise. You know, that also refers when the rich man died, he opened his eyes in hell. When Lazarus died, he opened his eyes in paradise. This man going down the cross, he know, we know he was saved because Jesus says, I'll see you in paradise as soon as this is over. There's where he went. He's in paradise. He said, and it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over the whole earth until the ninth hour, about a three-hour span. From about noonday to about 3 o'clock, the, cl the clouds grew dark. But there was a reason for that. Some refer to it that that was when the uh, Heavenly Father couldn't see the sins, could not look upon sin, and the world's sin at his death was going to be placed upon his back, that the sacrifice would be him. His blood would cover those sins for once and for all and never Never have to do it again. Uh, the sky grew dark for about three hours span there. And it says, and, and the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in twain in the midst. Now, there's a whole message to be preached about the veil of the temple, not saying that, uh, uh, not trying to hurry through it, but you got to know that the, the, the veil was a real thick, thick piece of cloth. Some would say nearly a foot thick. But the reason why the veil was rent in twain, because when Jesus died on the cross and he rose from the dead, uh, we used, they used to have to go to a priest and, and bring their sacrifices, and he would uh, act, uh, do a sacrifice, and, and he would pray for those people that their sins would be covered for another year, that they could come back and do it a time and time again. Well, my friends, we don't have to have a priest because Christ died and us accepted him. He made us kings and priests. We have the same 
same ability that the priests did in those days about them going into the holies of holies, praying to a holy God and going to the throne of grace. We had that privilege just by ourselves alone as we are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. The veil of the temple was rent in twain. There's no hiding back there. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to have your life right and have a rope tied to you. If you go back there and you're unclean, you die because you're in the very presence of God. My friend, you can be in the very presence of God because a, a saved person has the Holy Spirit within them. We can be in his very presence. He is in our presence as much as we want him to be there as long as we walk close to him. He said these things here. He said that uh, uh, when he said, you will be me in paradise, that man was saved. And that's where he went there. He says, and when Jesus cried there in uh, verse 44, I'm sorry, yeah, verse 45, and the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent and train, twain. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thine hands I commend my spirit. And all of a sudden, the veil of the temple was rent and twain. That practice would be no more. It was the doctrine that Jesus Christ was trying to say. He was saying, I am all you need. You don't need that no more. How in the world? You know, it's amazing of all the other um, different types of beliefs they are since that day and now. It was hard for them to walk away from the way they'd done things then and accept Jesus Christ. And now it's hard for them to uh, want to believe in him and even believe some of the old things. Uh, they go this separate ways. Uh, I, I can tell you... Um, just just thinking of a few, the Jehovah Witness and the Mormons and all like that. Listen, if, if Jesus Christ isn't the utmost person in your belief there, then your belief is null and void. He is the only one. There is another, not another man that is even shouldered with Jesus Christ because he is the Son of God. It ain't Joseph Move, Reverend Noon, or Buddha, or any of them guys. It's Jesus and that's him only. He is the only one. Some of them believe, and I heard a man speak about that today, um, that someone that believed that you would die like the Mormons do and you go to a place called purgatory and some of your friends would pray you out of that place when everything's got right. My friend, I hope I don't have to depend on my friends. I got good friends, but the only friend I depend on is his name's Jesus Christ, the one that died for me and it said that if you will come, you allow me to come into your heart, I will abide in you and you will abide in me. And in my father's house of many mansions, I go to prepare a place for you that if it were not so, I would have told you so that that was not true. He said, but where I go, there you may be also. My friend, I know where I'm going, and I can talk to him as much as I, I don't have to hide behind a veil. I can just call upon him, and he enters into my heart. Verse 46, and when Jesus cried that, he says, Father, in thy hands I commend my spirit. He said, and having said this, he gave up the ghost. I like that part. I like that part when the scripture says he gave up the ghost. They did not kill him. You know, they come by to break the legs of them so that they would die before dark so they could get them down off the cross because their religious day was coming the next day and they sure didn't want to be bothered with all that and couldn't touch anything like that. So they come to Jesus. He was already dead. A man stuck his spear in the side of Christ and the Bible says that blood and water ran from him there and that was also to satisfy prophecy of what would happen unto him. They did not kill him. He gave his life. 47, and when the centurion saw that, that what was done, he glorified God, saying, he says, certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together uh, to that sight, beholding the things which were done, smote their breast and returned. I, I think about that. Now, that's just, you, you talk about a centurion soldier there that I believe that uh, was the same one that says, truly this man was the son of God. Luke says that he said, truly this man was a righteous man. Uh, you know, and then you got some that would walk up there. It's kind of like their little thing, and they would smoke their breast to him like, we have did it. We have gotten rid of you. That's what it's talking about there. Smoke their breast. The ones that's weeping mentions next in the last verse I'll read tonight. He says, and all his acquaintances and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. That's the ones that he talked to on the Del Rosa there carrying his cross. That's the ones that stood back and, and waited. And, and uh, even his mom was there. And uh, he looked upon her in another gospel that says, And woman, behold thy son. 
I can tell you, my friend, it was an awful thing but it, uh, for, to, to have to witness. It was an awful thing to have to see. They got a lot of movies out now, and some of them are bloody and gruesome and all like that. But my friend, I don't care what Hollywood does to it. They'll never do it justice if you was there in person to believe you see a man in that kind of shape still loving people and caring for a sinner that was fixing to die and go to hell. How precious is he to love us that way? And John said it the best. For God so loved us that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish. Perish in that part means to go to a place. I always, always remember when I learned to bag groceries. You put the canned goods in one thing, you put the bread in another bag, and you put all the perishable items in a second bag, double bag, so it would hold it and would not ruin. But if we shall not perish, we will not ruin. But if without Christ you perish, you means ruin, no good, hurts, bad, then that's what it means. And these people saw it. I think uh, how sad it must have been outnumbered. And some of that we won't, we won't get a chance to mention for Sunday, but we find out right after that, right, it goes right into it, that there was a man that came and begged the body of Jesus. It was a man that's not spoken of very much, but in this account only that you find Joseph of Arimathea. And not only that, it's also mentioned of the man that came to Jesus by night that Nicodemus had a part in helping him with that. But Nicodemus is not the one that went in and asked because, see, Nicodemus was supposedly one of them until he met Jesus that night and he became a different man. One day people will beg for Jesus. Now you could do that and make a difference. But I'm afraid that day when every beneath shall bow and every tongue, there won't be no decisions made that ain't already made prior to that. Your decision's already made. Your ticket's already bought and paid for one way or the other for what Jesus done. As we get closer to uh, Christmas, get closer to Easter, it should be an exciting time. I wish the world knew everywhere they went what truly transpired over over 2,000 years ago on Easter morning. I always like that one part, and I'm going to leave it. Early one morning, On the first day of the week. That's why we celebrate Sunday is the first day of the week. We celebrate that. They used to celebrate it on Saturday. Those days are behind the curtain and cut down and gone away. We celebrate the first day of the week because that's when he showed himself alive on the first day of the week. If that ain't a holy day, then there's not a holy day. Need to remember. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God. For all the examples that you've written, and I know words cannot describe what we went through, but God, through the Spirit of God, we're broken inside. We're happy but sad. God, we we rejoice that you were more than an overcomer, but God, by you having victory, Lord, we have victory. We have victory only because of you, and we thank you for it. God, give us a safe trip home. We thank you, Lord, for all the ones that could come tonight. Lord, prepare our hearts for Sunday morning and uh, bringing people with us, Lord, that they too may hear the word of God. God, and they may want what we know that they need, and they need you. Go with us now, in Jesus' name, amen.